Hello and welcome back to Tiny Artist TV. Today is the first video in a series that I'm going to be calling Saturday Morning Shuffle, where I draw random stuff on the weekend. So for today's video, we're going to be doing another Pokemon Gajinka, and as you can see, I have the random Pokemon generator up, and I'm hoping I don't get some of the more garbage designs that Pokemon has to offer, because some of them are really strong, but some of them are not so great. So let's see what we get. Okay, so we're going to start with <laughs> Zigzagoon, um, and then of course just go down the line. So for this one, honestly, Zigzagoon is one of my favorites because they're so cute and tiny and raccoons are just awesome. Um, I thought of doing this like cute little girl in this oversized hoodie, um, and the only problem I really had was executing the ears. Like, I thought about doing these ponytails, but then I thought, well, how is that going to work with the hood? Um, and they ended up playing around with a couple of different, like, settings, like having the ears down, but then she looks sad. So, in the end, I just end up putting some felt ears on top of this hoodie and just end up putting her in, like, a zigzagoon hoodie and giving her the little tail as a belt. Um, and when I start going into the lines, I wanted to do something that was more of like a, a die cut sticker style, a little more like full cartoony. So I go with a five point round brush for my outline. And then I use the three point round brush to go in and do all of the details just to give it some differentiation and make it look a little bit more like that sticker style. So as usual, as we're getting into the rest of the line and coloring of uh, this cute little, uh, I was gonna say fella, whatever, <laughs> this cute little zigzagoon here, it is time for some pokey facts. And of course these are all just coming straight from Bulbapedia. I just feel like it's a good way to fill the time. Um, so zigzagoon is number 263 and is the pre-evolved form of Linoon and of course both are featured in the Gen 3 lineup of Pokemon. So something else I found out doing my little zigzagoon research, apparently, uh, zigzagoon is one of the only two Pokemon that are left out of the, <clears throat> excuse me, Hoenn region Pokerap, which is incredibly disrespectful. The other one is Relicanth. I guess it's kind of understandable because Relicanth is like just crusty old fish, but how can you leave out the sweet old zigzagoon? Anyway. <laughs> Uh, next up we have, oh, here's the completed sketch, and uh, next up we have Tapu Fini. So I had never heard of Tapu Fini prior to the uh, this random Pokemon generator experiment, um, but I figured just based on the name and the style that they were part of the Alolan uh, Pokemon lineup, which I was correct, um, <laughs> and then so, Pokemon names, man, they kill me. Um, at first I thought this name sounded like super cool, and then I looked at the names of the other Alolan Island Guardians, uh, Tapu Bulu, Tapu Koko, and, um, oh my goodness, what's the other one? Tapu Lele. And upon looking at their designs and reading their names, I realized that it's basically just, um, it's very on the nose. Kind of on brand for Pokemon. But anyway, so Tapu Fini is the fish version of the Guardians, whereas Tapu Bulu is a bull, Tapu Coco is a rooster, and, uh... <laughs> Tapu Lele is a little more ambiguous, but I guess she kind of looks like a flowery coral type thing. So anyway, I got Tapu Fini, um, who is like this cross between a merlin, a clam, and a mermaid. I actually really like her character design and the color palette, um, even though <laughs> the name kind of dulled the experience for me. But um, I didn't realize that she was supposed to be a goddess until after I already had done the Kajinka and then I went into doing research on this actual character. So I ended up doing, because I figured that this was going to be an Alolan Pokemon, I went with the 
Alolan gym leader theme of like it's very beachy very like chill so I went with this surfer girl and it was very easy to incorporate the uh, character design elements in this one too um, Tapu Fini is already kind of anthropomorphized because like of course it's like it's mixed in with like mermaid or siren elements which mermaid is half fish half human so it wasn't too hard to turn her into a human design um i keep saying her apparently tapafini is actually genderless but it's female presenting so we'll go with that um the long blue hair easy to do the fins were a little trickier i thought about giving her like the little surfer fins but that looked weird so i ended up putting her in these like just classic beachy sandals and the point on her head um I turned into the surfboard just because like I didn't want to give her like some weird spiky thing in the middle of her forehead um, cute little headband everything else was just pretty much cut and dry so now we're just getting into the coloring so as I said earlier um, Tapu Fini is uh, number 788 and they are of course part of one of the four guardians of the Alolan Islands next to Tapu Koko, Tapu Lele, and Tapu Bulu who actually after looking at their designs I do kind of want to do a Saturday morning shuffle and I guess it's not a shuffle because it's not random so a <laughs> Kajinka video of the other three guardians but drawing them as like these big powerful like deities and not as these cute little Pokemon even though Tapu Bulu is kind of intimidating um but yeah so Tapu Fini is number 788 and they are part of Gen 7 um he's the guardian deity of Pony Island and they can manipulate water and they gain energy from ocean currents so this is very much like inspired by like Hawaiian like deity lore which is like really cool because like Pokemon is definitely in recent gens been very diverse with their source material and I can definitely appreciate that so there's Tapu Fini next up is Crawdont um I was gonna try to do a guy design for Crawdont and then I ended up accidentally drawing Buttercup in a Crawdont costume <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I one of these days I will draw a male Gajinka. I guess I did in the Haunter for for Haunter he ended up being a male, but 9 times out of 10 I'm going to end up drawing a female just because that's what I default to. I don't know. It's everyone has their defaults. But um <laughs> Crawdon is a um water and dark pokemon from Gen uh, I want to say Gen 3. Yes, Generation 3, and they are number 342, and they are the evolved form of Corefish. Now, apparently, Crawdon actually got a, like, mega evolution, which looks, like, super scary. Like, it looks more like a dark Pokemon than, like, well, water and dark, whereas, like, Crawdon just kind of looks like a giant lobster. His new form looks like something that would mess you up if you came into his territory. I can appreciate that. It looks really cool. So for this design, because Crawdon is like, he's got these like a big clumsy clubby hands, like I just immediately thought of like Crawdon in action. So that's why I went with this like fighting pose. Um, and again, just going in with the uh, 0.5 round, not 0.5, the 5 round for the outline and then doing the uh, 3 for the uh, inner bits and bobbles. This is also, for some reason, the only one that had any kind of environment. I would kind of wanted to play around with that for some of the other ones, but I just didn't end up doing it just for time reasons. And I've also been doing these on like different days. Like one day I did Zigzagoon, the next day I did um, Tapu Fini. So these aren't all being drawn on the same day just because of time constraints. So by the time I got to this guy here, girl, whatever, um, I was doing this in the morning, so I had a little bit more energy. I was fresh out of bed and, like, fresh onto the tablet, and yeah, but when I did Zigzagoon, I had done that one, like, later in the evening after filming and editing one of my other videos, so I was kind of burnt out and just wanted to do a simpler design. Uh, you'll notice that none of these have shading yet. 
Um, I do decide to go back in later and actually do the shading and I'll show you guys like that steps towards the end of the video. But that was the other thing was that like because I was kind of working on these in my off time downtime, um, I had initially wanted to keep them simpler just because I was so tired. But I just couldn't do that and I wanted to keep it consistent with the first set of gajinkas that I did, which did have shading. Um, yeah, so color scheme is pretty simple. Again, because it's a water Pokemon, um, I wanted to go with like a, like this girl like lives by a body of water. She's out there all the time. So she's going to have a little bit of a tan to her. Um, something that I, okay. So the other reason I chose the skin tone for Tapu Fini was because like, there aren't like, okay. So I know that Pokemon with their like trainer gym leader skin tone palette they're definitely getting up there with who's being represented but with uh Tapu Fini being a goddess and her skin literally being black I just chose to make her like extra dark skin so for this one actually for most of them I kind of choose like relatively I don't want to say unusual but I don't default to Caucasian because why? Why would I? <laughs> anyway, um, so Crawdon has a little bit of a tan. It also just kind of mimics that um, tan underbelly that he has. Um, adding the bags under her eyes. I decided to go with like this red makeup look because the line under his eye isn't a hollow. It's like this weird crusty crevice. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so weird today. Um, crusty crevice under his eye. So I gave her some, like, some under eye, very intense makeup. So Crawdon is finished. And now, oh boy, we're moving on to, uh, Clink Clank, who is the third evolution of Clink and Clang. How creative is that? Like, not to knock the creative process for the people who work on Pokemon, like, I understand that there are hundred, literally hundreds of designs, there are, like, several dozens of people working on these designs and names, but, like, why couldn't we have gone with the Japanese name? The Japanese name is Giga Gyaru, which is, like, Giga Gear. How cool does that sound? Well, we get... Gling Gling! Okay, I mean, I guess, like, there's Magneton, Magnemite, and, yeah, and, uh, I, uh, so anyway, <laughs> as you can tell, I was not excited about doing this one, but, um, I, I end up doing this, like, this weird, like, sciencey girl in a hula hoop, and that's, that's- it is what it is. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just... <sighs> I'm not laughing because I'm happy. I'm laughing because it's awkward. I... <laughs> like, okay, so before I did this, before I start thought about starting this series, I did play around with the Pokemon Random Generator just to see what kind of uh, things would come up. And I did get Kling Kling in one of the like earlier iterations when I was just playing around with it. And I was like, oh, I really hope I don't get this Pokemon. Here we are. Karma's just taking a big old chomp out of my haunches. So yeah, I, it, it does end up being a kind of cool design just because like I like doing steampunk stuff. I'm not super into mecha just because like I like doing soft flowy things and mecha tends, tends to be very mechanical very angular um but i come up with this design that's like i don't know i think she would look really cool as like a video game character or like as a gym leader that's kind of another thing that drives the designs behind these gajinkas is like what would these pokemon look like as gym leaders or if the gym leader was dressing up as their main so yeah but designing this one was like it was definitely an interesting process there was just gears and lines everywhere, and it's like, how do I make that interesting? 
the first few sketches that I did were, I thought about doing like this big brother, little brother type situation. Like have the, I guess, the clang part of Kling Clang be this like big beefy guy and have like Kling be his little brother is like sitting on his shoulders with an eye patch. I was like, mm, that looks weird. <laughs> And it also doesn't really kind of go with the aesthetic of the other three, so again, I end up defaulting to this more androgynous figure, honestly, um, and just doing the gears as their outfit and just making everything like really shiny and metallic. So um, I guess it's time for some pokey facts about Clinkling. So Klingling is number 601 and as I mentioned is the third of all form of Kling and Klang um, and is a steel type that was introduced in Generation 5. Um, I'm honestly, okay, so past Gen 5, like I'm familiar with the starters but like, and the legendaries, but Gens 5, 6, and 7 are not my forte. So honestly, I hope I get a couple more Pokemon from these gens just because, like, I don't have any, um, preconceived or, like, um, any prior knowledge of them. So coming up with a design, like, I won't be influenced by any kind of nostalgia or, like, favoritism. Uh, which is another reason why Clink Clang was kind of, like, difficult to design because it's like, I don't have any connection to this Pokemon, it's just a design to me. Um, but here we are. I'm actually, uh, just adding in the little bits of pre-shading before I go into the actual shading. Just touching up little bits here and there. Um, so now I am, I select the invert and then I set the layer above it to multiply it first and then I set it to overlay and add a turquoise to give it the shading. So it's kind of cool to see how the turquoise, it's the same color, but it looks different on every single one of them. This is the end of the first Saturday morning shuffle. I hope you guys had a good time and I will see you guys next time. Have a weird day.